What's up, guys? Welcome to a new episode of the Young Ed's podcast. Today, we're going to be doing a trade breakdown on yet another deal heading into the 2024 trade deadline. And this time, it's concerning Vladimir Tarasenko, who is being traded from the Ottawa Senators to the Florida Panthers. So as you can see here, uh, Ottawa is retaining 50% of Vladimir Tarasenko's uh, contract. Uh, they receive a 2025 third round pick, a conditional 2024 fourth round pick. And the condition is that the fourth round pick becomes a third if the Florida Panthers win the Stanley Cup. So honestly, I don't know how I feel about this deal. Uh, I know uh, Zach, as an Ottawa F Senators fan, uh, I think you speak uh, for everybody when we could say, well, we could use the word very underwhelming in terms of return, especially for a player who's known for his offensive caliber. And he's going to arguably one of the best teams in the NHL, uh, one of the, 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 the best odds of winning the Stanley Cup as well uh, this season. And just taking a quick look at his, you know, the production, 41 points in 57 games. So 17 assists and 24 assists. Former first round pick. 16 overall in 2010 by the St. Louis Blues, former Stanley Cup champion with the St. Louis Blues as well. Yes, he is 32 years old, but he's still very productive. And this is the return they get for him. The Montreal Canadiens got a better return for Sean Monaghan, who has dealt with a lot of injuries. He was labeled injury prone. And yes, he was having a good season. And he's been a great fit for the Winnipeg Jets. But let's be honest here. Tarasenko is the better player, yet they receive a lot less for Tarasenko. So we'd like to hear your thoughts essentially on this deal. Well, I think you described it as very underwhelming. I just think it's, it's honestly, it's, um, it's a very minimal return for what they could have got, in my opinion, for Vladimir Tarasenko. You know, um, a lot of the rumors were saying he was going to fetch at least uh, a second round pick and maybe, maybe a prospect or even a first round pick was a very, common thing to say on his front um he did have a no uh trade clause and he had a say in which uh team ottawa traded him to they they preferred to trade him to a contender as did the player um and maybe here i know it's a it looks like a really bad return and maybe the situation was uh, there was a better deal in place maybe for a club like edmonton but his uh no trade clause came into effect and he didn't want to um, denounce those rights uh, to go to go to a team like that. So it looks like Florida was probably a team of his choice. This is just a master class by, by general manager Bill Zito, who once again uh, looks like he's striking a, a high, re a high uh, return on investment deal to upgrade his team here. And in the process, there are, Ottawa is retaining half of his salary. So if we look at uh, the Florida Panthers uh, salary cap situation, if you could just pull it up really quickly, I, there's one there's one figure I wanted to show here. Um, if you look at their trade deadline cap space, if you scroll up a little bit here, it's a it's about at five point seven million. There you could see, uh, there you could that's for the Ottawa Senators, but for the Florida Panthers is about a five point seven uh, million. There we have it. And you add Tarasenko to the books, you're adding half of his salary of $5 million, so you're adding 2.5. And it means there's still a couple million dollars that uh, Bill Zito has to play with here to upgrade his team. There are rumors of, uh, of Max Pacioretty or other um, scoring wingers that could be added to this puzzle. But Tar look, Tarasenko is an amazing fit with, uh, with, with Florida's game. Um, I think he could easily slot in on their on their second line with Nick Cousins dropping out to the third, or you try something where he goes with two uh, responsible players like Barkov and Reinhardt on the first line, and Verhage comes down. But I don't think they're gonna Paul Maurice is gonna want to mesh with that. I don't know what you thought about um, his deployment. Well, I mean, look, they tried Evan Rodriguez in the top six. It worked until it didn't. Now they have Nick Cousins for the time being, but with Tarasenko coming into the fold, it's a no-brainer. He's going to be a second liner. I think that first line is perfect. Barkov has always had fantastic chemistry with Verhage, uh for years now. Sam Reinhardt is on fire, uh, having uh, you know 
a great uh, contract year. Um, will he resign? We'll see what happens uh, in terms of that. But, you know, we'll talk about that another day. Uh, Tarasenko, he wants to win another cup. The Florida Panthers look at this team. They saw what they did last year. They surprised the hockey world. This year, they built on that. And even when they had guys like Montour and Ekblad injured at the start of the season, people counted them out. I think even we counted them out. And they have to find the odds. And I think this is a very... A deep team from, uh, you know, first line to fourth line and in terms of their defense as well. Um, you know, there's a, they have a couple of questions heading into the offseason, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about, you know, their chances of winning the Stanley Cup. And I think Tarasenko not only brings experience being a former Stanley Cup winner, um, he also is a top six forward um, and playing on an Ottawa Senators team that was very disappointing this season to still be as productive as he was and now going on a top contending team uh, i think that's just going to solidify their top six it's going to increase their chances of winning the stanley cup as well and i think florida i think i'm ready to say it it's an absolute steal for the florida panthers and i think they stole oh, much, yeah. from from the ottawa senators and i, I don't know um you know what other offers were being, uh, you know, given um, to, to the Ottawa Senators for Tarasenko. But, you know, you look at some of the other returns, even a guy like Anthony Mantha, okay, who is inconsistently not productive with the Washington Capitals, finally hits a 20-goal plateau with Washington Capitals, which he hasn't done since his time with the Detroit Red Wings. Fetches a better return than Tarasenko, who's accomplished more in his career and has been consistently you know, over a 50 point player, I, I really, I can't wrap my head around it. I'm not even an Ottawa Senators fan and I don't understand it. And there's 50% retention too. Usually when you retain that increases the player's value. And in this case, it's like, it didn't. And it's such it seems an counterintuitive, you know, it, it, it's such an underwhelming return. I, I know like a lot of Ottawa Senators fans are disappointed um, here, Pan uh, Panthers GM Bill Zito, which I think is one of the best GMs in the league. You know, he's built such a good foundation for the Florida Panthers since he was named general manager, uh, you know, continuously winning every single deal he's made. So his statement is uh, the following. Vladimir is a highly skilled and experienced scoring winger who provides our club with another dynamic offensive option as we embark on the remainder of our season. We are excited for him to join our team and compete for the Stanley Cup once again. Yeah, I mean, that basically sums it up in terms of what they get as a player. And in terms of uh, statistics, we have uh, Jay Fresh's player card, uh, all offensive middle six scoring winger, uh, pri uh, primary creator of shots off the rush despite diminished foot speed, generally inattentive defensively. Well, they're not getting him first for defensive game. They have other guys who, you know, fit the bill. They're getting him because of what he's able to accomplish offensively. And, you know, $5 million, 50%, that's going to be, what, 2.5 mil? That means you know, the, uh, the, um, the Florida Panthers could definitely add another player if they choose to. And you mentioned Max Pacioretty, which I think is another great fit because, uh, you know, he's not being paid that much. And his preferred destination is to play there. And that's another guy with experience who's been to the playoffs many times, the Montreal Canadiens and the Vegas Golden Knights, has yet to win a Stanley Cup, but that would be a good fit for both the team and the player as well. So uh, I don't think Florida's done. Uh, Ottawa, I don't know what else they have up their sleeve, but if this is how they end the deadline and this is their only move, I give them probably a letter D or, D or, or like F at the moment. It's okay. You could give them an F, and I won't hold it uh, against you here. Uh, <laughs> look, I wanted to talk about uh, Tarasenko's production uh, this season. He look, you show the numbers before. He's on pace for for sixty, about sixty points on a on a full season, and you should consider the fact that he started the year um, being deployed by DJ Smith on the third line with a player like Brook Chartier, who's a, a fringe NHLer at best. He's kind of had to juggle around with line mates. Um, found a home a little bit with uh, with 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 Brady Kachuk for a little, like a very short amount of time, and and has mostly been deployed now with with Shane Pinto. But he's had to, you know, just uh, be on the go and ready to play with new line mates and 
and a new team and a new system, and he's been as productive as he was pre-trade um, last season. So you're getting... I know Jay Fresh said he's a middle six winger on his scorecard. I think he's still a, a very serviceable, uh, consistent top six scorer. And Florida are just going to add like a, a nice, another significant piece. Um, this guy is highly, highly skilled with the puck. Um, he knows how to create time and space for himself. He's a great shooter. They get, they're just getting another weapon. And Florida's already a wagon. We saw it in the playoffs last year. Um, we've been seeing it this year and their goaltending is, it looks like they, they have it, they have it going right now. And Bobrovsky seems to be a uh, very reliable as always. Um, this team is going to, is going to do some damage in the East. That's, that's my prediction here. And, uh, at, from the sense point of things, just to wrap it up a little bit, this deal only somewhat looks good. If they're bringing back Tarasenko this off season, he's talked a lot about how he likes having his family in Ottawa. Um, his his kids love it here uh love it in ottawa apparently um you know if you if that's the move you want to do in the offseason right now he's going for the cup he's going for that little run but in the offseason if he wants to return to ottawa and sign a, uh for a couple of years then you then you look at it and you say well look they they signed them as a free agent they got a couple of draft picks for him and they brought him back so from a business side of things, it looks a lot better. But if he's to re-sign in, in the offseason with Florida, as, a, as an Ottawa Senators fan, I'd be even more frustrated than I am right now uh, about, about the return. Yeah, and uh, you know, just a couple of uh, notes before we end the episode. Uh, you know, Tarasenko was discussing uh, at one point, I don't know if it carried on to the season, but you know, an extension to – or an uh, an original deal before they signed this one year deal to so sign like a th- two or three year deal um, to begin with. And that never like happened under Pierre Dorian. And, you know, if the Ottawa Senators would have lived up to expectations and been competitive and made the playoffs, I would have seen him resign. Uh, you know, is that, he's at the point in, in his career where he wants, you know, uh, stability and he wants to be with a team for a couple of years before he hangs up his skates. So, you know, it's not ideal being traded for a second consecutive, uh, sorry, a, se- a, con- a second consecutive uh, trade deadline for Tarasenko. It, you know, he, I, th- I thought he played pretty well to, to the Rangers. I thought he was a better player than Kane on the Rangers, but it just didn't work out. And he, he heads to Ottawa. And, uh, you know, I thought it was a great fit. Uh, from start to to finish, and now, like you said, I think maybe they they do revisit you know the opportunity to resign him, knowing that they had interest in signing him for a couple more years uh, to begin with. And one last note as well, uh, Claire uh, Hanna says that uh, Hanna sorry says that Tarasenko had a full no trade clause, giving the winger the luxury, and his only his top priority was to play for the Florida Panthers. So uh, you know for fa- like for us and also for fans. Yes, uh, we understand that, but at the same time, I think if they waited, if they would have waited a little bit closer to the deadline to see who else was interested. I think they could have got a little bit more. Um, so you know, I know you're not happy about it, and fans are not happy about it. I'm not too crazy about this deal. Um, but we all thought Tarasenko would have been the you know plan B for a lot of teams that failed to acquire Gensel, but it seems like they ripped the band aid. They're like, no, our, our target is Tarasenko. They saw the price tag. They saw it was affordable, and they pulled the trigger. So those are our thoughts, guys. But I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, who won this deal? I think it's pretty obvious who won this deal. But you know, other people have different opinions, so we're always open to hear what they have to say. Uh, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel. We'd like to hear from both fan bases. Ottawa fans, what are you thinking? Um, Florida Panther fans, what are you thinking? And anyone else who wants to comment on this video. Please make sure to do so, and uh, we'll have a fun time debating in the comment section. And until next time, until the next trade that happens, see you on the next episode of the Young Guns Podcast. Thank you so much, guys, for watching.